always shoot for the horizon, but recognize that beyond that horizon is more land. Welcome to the second episode of World Building Kijemen. I am Sean Fleur, aka Soaring Moon, your host for this series and creator of this fictional universe. This episode will cover Una's geology and geography. This episode is sponsored by my book, Paracosmicon. A link to my book is in the description below. It is available as a paperback, in PDF, Mobi, and EPUB formats, and is available in most places that ebooks are sold. The night sky of Una would be boring with a plain black sheet of sky devoid of stars and a moon. The source, although off, is still quite bright. It emits its own very dim moonlight, bright enough to allow you to see as similarly as you can during a new moon. In the sky, in place of stars, are twinklers. Twinklers are very large gem and gemstones that are cast off from the source. They have been falling toward Una for billions of years. They are slowed by the atmosphere below just enough to crash into either land or the torrent of clouds below at high speed. Upon landing, they make an impact crater. If they miss the land, which is more likely, they slow in the clouds, eventually to a stop. When they do, the magical gemstones attract other small gemmen to form a large cluster of gemmen. This cluster attracts dust from the torrent to form a landmass that becomes a new skyland. When it reaches an appropriate size for the energy capacity of its gemstone core, it floats to a point of equilibrium above the clouds. This is such a rare event that it has only been viewed in person by one small team of researchers several centuries ago. The age of a skyland is determined by its appearance. High wind erosion signs like scoured areas, rippled soil surface, loose sand, and pedestaled rock indicate young recently ascended skylands. Skylands which have a wide variety of life, seemingly directed by the elemental energy radiated from its skyland core are indicative of a mature skyland in the middle of its life. A dying skyland whose core's energy has depleted will be devoid of plant life. It will have signs of its old age before it ultimately plummets from the sky. With the only warning being centuries of dying life, it drops like the stone it is, in sudden acceleration. Plummeting skylands have been observed only three times. They are easier to find visible, unlike the growing skylands below the clouds, and they are monitored regularly. Each skyland has a core made of gemmen. Gemmen are magical gemstones exhibiting one or more of ten colors. The colors of gemmen are red for fire, orange for body, yellow for wind, green for earth, cyan for energy or electricity, blue for water and ice, purple for spirit, magenta for decay, white for life, and black for death. Gemmen fall from the sky all of the time. Lighter gemmen have time to slow down from air resistance as they fall, doing less damage to the ground as they do. Larger stones hit man-made structures infrequently. The life and biomes of a skyland are affected more by the color of the gemmen at its core than by weather elevation, ecology, or other environmental factors. The core color radiates a field of energy that fundamentally changes its environment. Red gemmen cores heat stone and cause magma flows, eruptions, and dry the surface of the land. They are one of the means deserts form outside of core depletion. Blue cores cause skylands to have wet or cold environments. Green cores cause jungles and forests to form. Cyan cores cause violent thunderstorms, and purple cores are, well, they are mostly haunted spiritual places 
full of lost spirits. Kijemin's world has some religious literalism that affects how its universe works. There are environments and biomes which are impacted by the existence of a canonical afterlife. Going to these places allows a person to interact with the world of spirits and are often populated by rare wildlife and plants. Most of these skylands are inhabited by worshippers or people trying to contact the dead. Traveling across Una is very dangerous. Both natural and artificial hazards will route your journey on a different path than you plan to take. An example is the beat ship, an area of millions of small floating stones and skylands broke from a larger skyland in the ancient past. It is suspected that the region was formed by a high-speed collision between multiple skylands. What caused the collision is still unknown. Another example is the Knife of Canard, a funnel-like arrangement of wind currents that draws approaching ships into it. It takes travelers beyond the constellation of Radef and into the Vesper Wisp, a vortex that descends into the clouds. Constellation is the word the people of Una use to refer to a recognizable arrangement of skylands on a map. There are no stars, their history developed differently. The Knife of Canard is a small example of a geographical feature common to Una called a wind wall. The wind walls and vortices throughout this world affect the routes of trade and direction of travel for airships not using predetermined shipping lanes, called skyways. Skyways are arranged by a multinational governmental authority to mostly bypass these wind walls to ease travel. However, because Una is an open sky, more direct routes through the walls are possible. The word wind wall implies that it is impassable but people do it all of the time. Wind walls have a convective current that blows in a specific direction. Going one way through it is dangerous due to high variable wind speed, but is a fast method of travel. Flying into a wind wall in the direction wind is blowing is difficult because you have to overcome its wind speed. As long as a pilot is skilled enough or has planned to move through the wind wall when it has relatively calm, non-turbulent, or laminar flow, wind walls are safe. Despite this, hundreds of ships are lost trying to pass through wind walls each year. Now, you know a little about the geographical features of the world of the Infinite Archipelago. Next episode of the series will cover some of the magic of the universe. Gemites, who are casters of that magic, and some introductory information about the key gem in themselves. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of World Building Key Gemin.